This is a video about a really interesting trading indicator known as Supertrend AI Clustering by Luxalgo. It's a pretty clever tool that you can use to get a new perspective on trend detection by combining the classic Supertrend with some machine learning magic. We're going to go over what this indicator is and how you can use it in your trading. If you happen to find value in this video, remember to leave a like. Now, to get started with this indicator, you first of all want to go to TradingView, the trading platform that I'm going to be using. If you need to sign up, there's a link in the video description for you to do that. Next, you want to load up your favorite chart, maybe something like Bitcoin on the 4-hour, and then you want to click on Indicator. Then type in Supertrend AI Clustering. It's going to be this one by Luxalgo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the all-powerful Supertrend AI Clustering Indicator by Luxalgo. It's a novel take on bridging the gap between k-means clustering, which is a machine learning method, and technical indicators. Specifically, it applies this k-means clustering to the good old Supertrend Indicator to give us some enhanced signals. So, let's break down what you're seeing on your chart. First up, you'll notice these labels that pop up, indicating where the start of a bullish or bearish trend is detected. And if you look closely at those labels, you'll see numbers on them. These numbers are super important because they represent how reliable the signal is, kind of like a confidence score. A reading of zero is the least reliable. You can think of zero to three as weak confidence, four to six as moderate, and then seven or higher suggests a pretty high probability that the signal is accurate. When these labels appear, you'll also see a line that comes with the signal. This line acts as a dynamic stop-loss level, always trailing behind the price in the direction of the trend. It's your first line of defense, a potential stop-loss when you first jump into a trade. But then, you'll spot a second line, and this is called the trailing AMA line, or adaptive moving average. It works a bit like the regular trailing stop. But instead of just strictly following the trend signals, it adapts based on performance feedback. Sometimes a signal might pop up, but this adaptive moving average trailing stop hasn't shifted yet. If that happens, you could consider that AMA line as your longer term trend guide or a caution level if price gets too close, maybe signaling a time to exit or wait for a clear break before trading. And don't forget the candle colors. This indicator uses a gradient system for the candle colors to visually show you the trend strength. This is awesome because it helps you gauge market momentum, seeing how the market shifts from a strong trend to a weaker one, which might even help you find entries if you miss the very first signal. Finally, there's a dashboard on your chart. This dashboard gives you the lowdown on the underlying testing of all those super trends it's analyzing. It has a cluster tab that outlines how different groups or clusters of super trend settings are performing, showing you the best, average, and worst performing data. You'll see columns like size, indicating how many super trends are in that cluster. Bigger usually means more reliable. Centroid dispersion tells you how spread out the values in a cluster are, with low dispersion suggesting tighter, more reliable signals. And the factor column shows the average super trend factors used, with higher factors giving wider stops and lower factors giving tighter stops. Next, let's peek into the settings, because there's some good stuff to tweak here. The ATR length is pretty fundamental. It sets how responsive the indicator is to price moves. A shorter length makes it quicker to react, while a longer length smooths things out and might filter out some noise. Then you've got the factor range and step size. These define how that trailing stop behaves. The factor value itself influences how far the stop is from the price. By setting a range, the indicator tests different setups, which you then see reflected in those dashboard clusters. The step size just fine-tunes this, with smaller steps giving more precise adjustments. Performance memory is another key one. It controls how much weight is given to recent versus older market data. Higher memory focuses on current trends, leading to faster adjustments, while lower values give more weight to long-term patterns, smoothing things out. And the cluster dropdown is where you can choose if the final signal is derived from the best, average, or even the worst performing clusters. Choosing the worst might sound odd, but it could suit a more conservative trader looking to filter out aggressive signals. Lastly, settings like maximum iteration steps and historical bars calculation refine how deeply the indicator digs into the market data. More iterations can give more precise cluster optimization, and more historical bars give a richer analysis, though it might take a tad longer to load. You'll want to find a balance that suits your needs. 
For me, I generally like to see how the default settings perform first before I start tweaking too much, but knowing these options are here is great for fine tuning. Now, let's talk about how you can actually use this indicator in your trading. Just because the indicator spits out these higher rated signals doesn't mean we should just blindly follow every single one. The best way to use any indicator, including this one, is to combine it with your own analysis, looking for patterns and confirmations in the price data. For a bullish setup, you'd be looking for one of those buy labels, ideally with a higher confidence number, say 7 or above. You'd also want to see the price action confirming this, perhaps breaking out of a consolidation or showing strong upward momentum, with the candle colors possibly shifting to a stronger bullish gradient. The trailing stop line gives you an initial idea for your stop loss, and you could also watch that adaptive moving average AMA line. If price is respecting it as dynamic support, that's a good sign. You might wait for a small pullback towards the trailing stop or the AMA line, especially if the initial signal was a bit extended, and then look for an entry as price resumes the upward trend. For a bearish setup, it's pretty much the reverse. You're looking for a sell label. Again, preferably with a decent confidence score. You'd want to see the price action agreeing, maybe breaking down from a range, or showing strong selling pressure with the candle colors reflecting a strengthening bearish momentum. The trailing stop line gives you your initial stop loss placement above the entry. And again, watch that adaptive moving average line. If it's acting as dynamic resistance, that's a bearish confirmation. You could look for a pullback towards these lines before entering a short position. Remember, those confidence numbers on the signals are key. A lower rated signal, like a one or two, might suggest a weaker trend or even a potential retracement. So you'd want to be much more cautious or even wait for a higher rated signal to appear or combine it with other strong confluences from your own analysis before jumping in. For instance, if you see a lower rated signal in what looks like a ranging market, it might be wise to sit on your hands and wait for a higher rated signal that appears as the price starts to break out of that range. Even with a high-rated signal, it's not a crystal ball. You might see a high-rated signal fail, but then another one appears shortly after. This is where combining it with your own chart reading, like identifying consolidation zones and waiting for a break, becomes really powerful. In summary, the Supertrend AI, clustering indicator by Lux Algo, is a really powerful tool because it takes the familiar Supertrend concept and supercharges it with K-means clustering to provide more adaptive and potentially more reliable trend signals. By giving you those confidence ratings on the signals, the dynamic trailing stops, the adaptive moving average, and the visual aid of gradient candle colors, it helps you gauge trend strength, potential entry points, and manage your risk. It's all about combining these features with your own solid analysis to make better trading decisions. And of course, it's important to remember that this is not financial advice. The strategies discussed here are based purely on indicators, and for any real trading, you should always add your own price action analysis, fundamental analysis, or other forms of due diligence. Trading involves risk, and you should never trade with money you can't afford to lose. If you found value in this video, remember to leave a like, or even better, consider subscribing to stay tuned for more content like this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.